Okay, Stephen, we're back. Uh, this is our chairman's team, or I should say a part of our chairman's team. If we want to go ahead and go introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kylie. Uh, James Campbell. I'm Chris Warner. Jenny Dinser. And we're asking them some of the, basically, I think the eight main most common questions that if you really wanted to know something about chairman's, we summed it up with these questions. Uh, we also asked not only our team, but we also were able to Skype with Kathy Schultz and her team, and also Glenn Lee and his team to answer the same. So we're going to get a little bit of... And, and in case you didn't know who those teams were, that's uh, Hall of Fame team 1538, the Holy Cow's most recent Hall of Fame team. For and celebrities. Also, <laughs> for celebrities, absolutely. And also Team 359, the Hawaiian Kids, also a Hall of Fame team 2011. Yep. So let's go ahead and we're going to go down the list of the questions here. Jenny, so question number one uh, is going to go out to you. How do you advertise chairmen to get students involved, whether they're on the team or whether they're brand new students that have never, they don't even know anything about FIRST? Well, I, I guess it's, there's two parts. So one, to get them in the door. We need to let the students here at our school know that robotics is, is there's really a lot more to it than just building the robots. And so... Um, so we try to let them know that they can get leadership skills here, that if they're interested in doing presentations, if they're interested in, in writing, if they have great um, verbal skills, then they can, they have a role to play in this team. Also, and more than that, we try to pitch it to students that are interested in graphic design or um, video production, things along those lines. And so we target students that are in those classes or in those types of clubs and uh, we try to rope them into our team. Uh, students join the team that are interested in the robotics or the engineering mainly, but I don't know, a lot of people just sort of wander over to the PR side and end up sticking with it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Connor. I feel like we talk about, you know, writing and photography from the very beginning, from, you know, the first time somebody hears about the team, we make sure to say, you can also be a photographer or a videographer or a writer. Well, I think it starts with what is your program about? And for our program, from the very beginning, we were more than just about building robots. Because we're a small school, if what's, we just... What's your population, just so, because I know, is it a thousand or more than a thousand students? We are a school with 600 students from grades 7 through 12. When I, when I started here 20 years ago, we were a school of 1,200 students. And then when the main, um, when the uh, Wailua Sugar Mill went down, or well, they closed after being in business for 96 years, a lot of the families and the kids moved out. And so we had to reinvent ourselves and create, do something, because um, our, our community kind of lost their identity. And so we wanted to bring something to the, to the community and FIRST Robotics was an opportunity for us to bring STEM. We don't just build robots. If we did, we'd probably get five to 10 kids every year, which isn't enough to, to form a team. What we did was we tried to attract kids that were also in arts and communication and, or, or who were interested in graphics or other kinds of like things like digital media. And so by doing that, we, we actually Technically, we could service any kid who was interested in anything to be a part of our program. Do you try and get organizations like NHS and DECA involved oh, as well? Yeah, absolutely. Be, I, those, those are the kids that are already in those leadership roles. And um, I think that those, that those clubs, uh, will be it, they're great organizations, they're really just focused on the leadership skills in this organization they get so much more. And so I think it's an easy pull when we let them know that we have those things too. Do you want to chime in on, the, on that at all, James, also? Or? Um, yeah, no, I just think it's very important to show how fun it can be for everyone that's involved. There's so much more, like she said, so much more than just building a robot. We want to document the robot. So many people love making presentations, they love making video, and it's, it's one of their favorite pastimes. So you give them an opportunity to not only record the team's history, but to record part of their high school history, and a lot of students like to jump right on board with that. And it gets a lot of new members in, and at times there's only so many hands that you can really fit into the robot at one time, and it keeps everyone on the team active all throughout the season. I think it also kind of gets the parents involved. 
I, I really do. I think building a robot, if you're not a mechanical engineer or computer programmer, as a parent, you're a little standoffish. But being able to transport kids back and forth to outreach to, uh, you know, feeding the homeless or what would you guys just do recently? You were at the Children's Museum? Yes, we have a robotics exhibit there. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, um, you asked earlier what to do to get them if they're on the team involved in chairmans. Well, at the beginning of the year, we have we have kind of an introduction to all as aspects of the team, and so they they rotate through uh, each of the each of the subgroups of the team, and everybody gets a little bit hands on, and then we break out into interest groups, and that's where we go from there. Excellent. And a lot of a lot of times here. Everyone is part of every part of our team. So whether we're building a robot or doing our outreach, we're all, all part of every aspect of our team. The majority of us, we're here last night until 1 o'clock in the morning building the robot, putting the finishing touches on. Tuesday, we have to bag it, so we had a lot of stuff to do. Today, came in this morning, back to work, practicing the presentation. And everyone knows that it's just a part of the team. Being here on Team 97, we know we're doing outreach. We know we're giving back to the community. We know that we're spreading the awareness of STEM. And we know we also have a competitive robot that we want to build also. So everyone knows that they have that sort of commitment level that they want to bring to the team so that they make sure that all aspects of our team are going very well. Excellent. Kylie, this one's for you. What is the best outreach for a chairman's team? My favorite type of outreach is going to smaller kids like how we do our Discovery Museum Junior Camp and creating VEX teams and creating FLL teams. I love seeing the little kids get so involved and having so much fun with and us helping them and showing them that we can have what they can do and that they can come into FRC and do what we do. And I love seeing how happy they get when we're teaching them. I agree. It's a good partnership with the community. Exactly. Yeah. To see the passion behind their eyes at such a young age, because you see that they love it. And once you get them hooked and loving what they're doing, they love to take it and just run with it in whatever direction they want. So. I, some feedback that we got from Chairman Judges a couple years ago was that we were doing outreach that wasn't, it was great that we were doing outreach in the community, but they wanted us to do outreach that focused m mostly on STEM. And so we really regrouped and routed all of our, our outreach efforts. Would you guys say that that's kind of a regional thing? Like it really depends on what part of the country you're in as to what meeting the needs of your community, I guess? Most definitely. You're going to get feedback from judges in different communities and they're going to tell you, hey, this is probably what your neighborhood needs. This is probably what your community needs. And they'll let you know where you, your team can find your niche to help spread the awareness of STEM. There's a lot of feedback from that. For us, our main goal was to work it was working with our politicians okay like in trying to get the word of first out through that through our politicians locally and we have so much support now for them that they're coming to us be right for the regionals and so for us getting involved with our politicians has been a big one maybe some of the kids have other ideas i feel like um the off season we do battle of the border is a really Mm -hmm. good event. Um, I mean, it, uh, it's just a one-day thing, but um, it's huge for all the teams that show up. How many teams do you usually have? Uh, around 20 to 30. Yeah, it, it varies from year to year, but it is generally between 20 and 30 teams. Is we it, max it out, I think, at 30, was it 32? Awesome. Right. James, this one's for you. When do you start the essay? Um, there's so many different levels of the essay, but the outline of the essay, the getting our general ideas out there, throwing a theme, if we're going with a theme, it's got to be done pretty early, probably early October, at least throwing the theme out, throwing some outlines out, and then through November we get some rough drafts, and then right around FLL, the championship here, we host the championship here, and it's the first couple of weeks of November. Oops. How unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. All right. We'll cut it's on better than my blip. And don't think it's your phone that's ringing. It's his. <laughs> it's, it's, and where's the, oh, that, that was, okay. right. We'll keep that one in there. It's yeah, good exactly. for laughs. All right. Um, but yeah, so started and then working through right after FLO is where I left off. And that's really when we knock out, not a final drop, but definitely something that we can throw out to the, the entire team and say, hey guys, this is, this is what we came up with. 
what's the feeling, and then we'll fine tune it. Um, the first couple of weeks of the build, all the way up, and that way we don't have the essay to write during the build, but it is definitely getting fine tuned during the build. So again, we can work on both things at the same time, and then we'll submit it early. It's very, I believe it's very important. The whole team will agree. It's important to submit at least a day early because. Um, the website has been known to be unavailable when you try and submit, yeah. maybe get a lot of teams at once yeah. crashing the servers. Yeah. Crashing yeah. the server, yeah. So just to avoid that completely, submit the day before. And if you just put that extra effort into making sure everything is ready the day before, you're going to have a better finished product anyways. For our team over the years, um, especially towards uh, the later years before we won the championship chairman's award, that became a full-time year-round thing for our program. And so right when the, the previous season ends, our team is already coming up with a plan. They're working on a script. They are working on ensuring that whatever events we plan, we, we, we document it. Mm -hmm. Videotape, interviews. Um, you know, if we plan to go to the legislature for an event or for uh, to showcase something, we make sure that we document that as well. So. To me, what embodies the Chairman's Award is what you do year-round. If you're a year-round program, you need to capture it year-round. And so that should be a, a, a full-time um, thing. Just like how when teams, when they build their robots, you know, a year-round program prototypes during the off-season. They get ideas. They, they look at other things. They reevaluate what they've done. They, they try different kinds of mechanisms. I think it's similar to, to the robot build. You, you put that much effort into documenting what your kids are doing. One of the big things that we didn't do early on that we, we do now, which we continue to still do, uh, even though we don't officially enter the Chairman's Award, is we track what our kids are doing after the program. So sometimes you might have a few kids that where it didn't make an impact or maybe they're not majoring in STEM or doing something with it or maybe they realize they want to do something else. but. But the fact remains that we do document everything, both good and bad, um, as far as the impact our program has on our kids that graduate. And so that's a big thing that I think um, teams should also focus on is not only worrying about what their current program is doing, but also looking at what their kids are doing after they finish the program. Jenny, this one's for you. When do you start the video? You have to, I mean, you have to sit down and have a conversation about what direction you want to go in with the video immediately. Right as soon as the academic year starts, maybe even the postseason the year before, because you have to have an idea of the theme of the video, what kind of what kind of shots you want to get. There might be some shots post post season and into the summer that if you didn't have a plan for it, you could miss if you started in August. And so you at least need to have that conversation about what direction you want to go in right away and then as far as editing goes um, give yourself a couple of weeks to a month to get the editing of the video done but remember that the, the video doesn't have the same timeline as the es as the essay you walk into the presentation with the video so if that's something if you're um, if you're not going to an early regional if you're going to a week four or five or a regional, smaller team you even could, where your you resources could do that are after spread the out build if, if needed but put some effort into it for sure Okay, the next question will be for the group. Um, your book or your history? Your, um, How you showcase your team's legacy. outreach for that year. Yeah, annually, I think you can keep it for three years, right? You can go back, chairman's three years. Oh, further than that, two to five now. Two to five two now, now. Documenting okay. Documenting for the chairman's presentation. Excellent. How do you actually document that? Is it a book? Is it a book that you add to annually? Is it a book that's constructed? on an annual basis? Is it just a binder? What do you guys do? Okay, so this is our book. <laughs> our, and we make a new one every single year. And um, we we used to put a lot more time into, into explaining all of the different events that we do in the book. And we feel like, um, well, James says all the time, a picture um, Pictures are thousand. What do you think? A picture is what worth is a thousand thing? words. Picture is worth a thousand it's, it's words. It's very easy to see what's going on. I do believe a picture is worth a thousand words. But at the same time, having some sort of document, documentation, some sort of proof, hey, mm -hmm. 
This is a picture of the beautiful event that we did. And maybe here's some documentation off to the side that goes with it to say, hey, these are all the people that were there. So that there's a reference for any numbers that are thrown yeah. out there. We, we like started X number of FLL teams. Well, here's here our are. teams. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you can easily in the world at first throw out, hey, we started 100 teams. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the proof to back it, it's all about evidence, right? Yeah. All about That's evidence. Right. I agree. I went to an FLO tournament one time, and I saw 100 teams, so I started 100 teams. I, what? That doesn't <laughs> really make sense, but okay, we'll go with it. Well, this, we like the book because you know, the kids buy it, so we could give it to sponsors, we could have it in the pit. It's just, I mean, it's nice, it's portable, it's clean looking, professional. So we, we, we're probably going to stick with that model for a couple of years. And uh, I like it because it's exactly that. It's a, it's a yearbook. It's, this is what our team did this year, and you want to see the year before? Well, here's the year before, and the year before that, and and we have uh, a bunch of different years that we'll bring with us just so that people can see how our team has morphed through the years, how we've transformed, how we've elevated, how we've gone from working in basically an old storage room to the shop that you guys saw last week. So it's, it's nice to have these kind of things where you can flip back the years of time. And it's great to give a sponsor at the end of the season. Oh, definitely. All of our major sponsors get a book as well. So it basically showcases what they actually contributed to. What was our outcome for the year? Last year at the championship, our chairman's team really liked your book. Um, we do like an annual yearbook. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you though. Your book is more like a Bible. Do you add to it or is it some, is that what you produce every single year? I'm really want to know that one. That's yeah, nice our huge. chairman's magazine that we do every year. We, are you talking about our big binder? Our yes. notebook documentation? Exactly. Yeah, no, we do. We keep up on that every year. Well, so yeah. that's a brand new item every year. Is that one binder or you add to no, it? No, no, we just keep adding to it. Oh, okay. Really, like some years you may have like three inches worth of stuff. Some years you may have like an eighth of an inch. It just depends on how much communication we have, how much feedback and stuff we get. We generally like emails, um, contacts, information. It's a good way to document and prove. Mm -hmm to other people who kind of don't always believe what you're saying. It's a good way to have that evidence. And it's just a good history for our team. It kind of, a lot of your stuff answered question number six, which was, are you done before the build with chairmen's? And you kind of alluded in your essay saying that you're just on going basically until submission. Yes, is up editing. until submission, very important, especially with our team. We want everyone involved with the team. We want everyone involved with the robot. So we, we have to make sure that, they, that deadlines are being met. We, when we game plan all this stuff, we come up with a Google Calendar in the calendar. We have deadlines here. A rough draft is due on this day. Make sure the rough draft is due. We have an edit day. Make sure things are getting edited. We have uh, the pre-submission that we look through. And then, of course, we have our submission date. All of these things are planned out so that we have as many people as possible sharing ideas, working on the robot, gaining all these wonderful hand-on experiences. And not only with the robot, but we want them to gain all those things with all the outreach stuff that, they, that we do. So they plan all the, everything that we do, put it into the Google Calendar, remind 101, hey team, this is what we've got going on. Everyone knows about it. Everyone who has time to get involved is gonna be involved. And I think we have a pretty good system set up. Excellent. We definitely have not done that for for quite some time. Um, this is our 15th year in robotics, I would say for at least the last 10 years we stopped doing that because you simply can't document and learn and build at the same time. And um, it doesn't mean that they're not involved. I think every kid who's in build, in, in our build pro, um, team, they are aware of, of everything else that happens. So it's not like they don't know that what's in the binders. They have some idea. They, they understand what the documentation team is trying to do. And that's all part of you know the communication between your sub teams. I think it should be I mean, should be special. Kids should have specialized jobs um, because they see how a business works and how an organization works, where everyone is needed for their specialized part in ensuring the success of the entire team. But I think the key part that must be emphasized is the communication that happens between subgroups. And we, our program has weekly meetings with all of our mentors and students at least once a week where every group discusses, reports, and shares all of their areas. Question number seven, Chris, this one's going to you. What tips do you have for pit judging? 
Well, it's very important that everyone on the team is prepared for any type of questions, especially people in the pit, that if a judge comes around. But it wouldn't hurt if you have a chairman's representative that is ready there to drop everything and talk to that judge immediately. I think it's also important that your entire team knows your uh, rubric. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead. You out of this. I'm out of it's good to be organized, so when the judge comes and asks you questions, you can clearly see how you, what you, how you met your standards for outreach that year. Got some bullet statements. Yeah. Yeah, yeah those uh, can kind of lead, lead you along. Definitely. Um, our pit speakers are mainly consist of the pit crew, and they have to know both the engineering aspects of the robot as well as um, the public relations of the team. Um, we also have pit speakers who. Uh, are more knowledgeable about the public relations sides of the team, but they still as well have to know about um, the engineering aspects. Do you guys I have them do like mock judging and they kind of go through the whole process. Like our chairman's team will spend nothing but hours and hours answering <laughs> questions. Do our chairman do that as well. We, they present, they practice, they come into a room, they don't know who's going to be in that room when they come in to present their presentation. Mm -hmm. They're asked questions. Um, generally, we try to have our chairman's presenters be our pit speakers uh -huh. because that way then too, they know who the judges are. Gotcha. So when the judges are coming back to maybe find out other questions, mm -hmm. they, they know who those judges were. So it kind of helps if they, come, if they see the judges coming back. Mm -hmm. to ask questions. Uh, question number eight goes out to the group. How do you prepare for presentation day? Well, you want to make sure you go over your lines. <laughs> it's like judging in the room, <laughs> getting asked the tough questions. Who's going to be the one to step well, we, forward? I was waiting for you because we just spent uh, we just spent the last hour preparing for presentation day. So I was waiting for you to step up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. All right. All right, so uh, you definitely want to make sure you're prepared, and just like that you saw how that happened, you want to make sure that each person knows if there's a certain question pops up, who's going to answer it so that doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> 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 He's touche teacher. This is a non-example. Yeah. That's why we did this episode, right? <laughs> don't follow suit. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. Okay. And if someone's ever struggling, you can just jump in there and help them answer. Because I was with Chris just a couple of minutes ago when we were running through our presentation. So preparing for our presentation, it's... It goes... You want to finish but, uh, Let's do this again. <laughs> no, I think this is good. No, this it's is good. Fun. So rehearsing is important is what you guys are Rehearsing doing. is important, which clearly we did not do here. <laughs> um, but no, we, we were just in the other room. We were practicing. Uh, the students run through the presentation. When they run through the presentation, they run through everything from how are they going to walk into the door, what props are they going to use, what, are they, what do they need to give to the judges, eye contact, and then going through the presentation. After the presentation, we go straight into, because there's a five-minute presentation portion, and of course, there's the five minutes question and answer, and we go straight into the question and answer. It's five minutes of, these are the types of questions, what are your guys' responses, and we'll come up with questions. They'll, they'll either be written down or maybe something they said in the presentation sparked a question and we'll throw that out to them and see how they react. Yeah, and it's important to time it because it, you really need to, the judges might, may or may not have leeway, chances are they won't have any leeway and so you really need to make sure that you're on time. And it says in the manual, it's from the moment you walk in the door, whether the judges are really strict about that, you never know. And so it's important to make sure that you're timing it. And then as far as Q&A goes, uh, it's a really good idea to pull other people in for Q&A because a lot of times they've come, they have questions that you haven't considered and who knows what the judges are going to ask. And so the, the presenters really need to be prepared for, for anything. Can't, it probably can't be over-prepared for the presentation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the deal breaker and the deal maker of Right, you've got five minutes to present a whole year's worth, well, and more worth of outreach, so obviously it's very important. Okay, so those are two good questions because I don't think I really ever shared. I think a lot of teams, it's not common knowledge to find out what teams actually do during those 10 minutes in the judges' room. Well, and I um, said, but, we really thought about these eight questions, you know, and, and we asked Kathy the exact same one, so it's, it's good um, feedback. I'll tell you something. Um, we had three girls who were 
a big part of, I mean, they're the ones that are really the reason why I think we won the Chairman's Award. I mean, I think it takes a special kind of person or, you know, a group of people to make it happen. Um, I, I just think it's like anything else you do, um, there's got to be some talent involved. I mean, the one thing that I did in back in 2007, I had a lot of kids do uh, Chairman's Award presentations. Where, where we got successful in doing it was when, I tell you, it was a year before, it was 2007, we were at our school awards assembly. Every year we have it in May. And this one girl came up and she won the best social studies student, best English student, best math student, best science student. And it just caught my attention because this girl won best in all four categories, which is rare in, our, rare in any school. And so I made this little comment because I was a science math department at the time as she came up. I go, wow, you're up again? We need you on our chairman's award team. I made that joke. And since that day, she was on our program. And, um, and so rather than looking at the kids that were um, interested in doing robotics because they had expressed an interest, we actually recruited from the English department and the social studies department because I mean, I'm not trying to stereotype, but in general, they were much better public speakers. They they could understand things, I think, a little bit better, and they had some, you know, there was a natural talent for them to present. And so, everything that was done in an actual pre ten minute presentation with judges, it wasn't me telling them how to do it or any other mentor. We gave input, but ultimately, they decided what they wanted to do. And so, in answering your second question, um, as far as what we actually did. We actually have our pull-up banners that we have in our pit. They took those pull-up banners, which kind of explained about our program, brought that in. Um, they had their binders with them in case they needed it, in case the judges had any specific questions. And they would actually only talk for about three to four minutes and actually showed our Chairman's Award video, which was a three-minute video, as part of that 10 minutes. But the difference is there was no sound. They narrated as the video played. So that was the difference between the Chairman's Word video you, you folks see for a program versus what they actually brought into the judges room. No sound. Just show, play the video and, and, sh and highlight the key points um, live for that three minutes while the video is playing. So uh, just a combination of those things in addition to um, answering questions of the judges. Had asked. One last question I have, it's not on the list, but do you set out to win a chairman's award? Do you have your eyes on the prize or how does that work? How do, how do we work as a team? I know the answer, but <laughs> I'm asking the question. We, we do have our eyes on the prize. Absolutely. But what is the prize? The prize in reality is spreading the, aware of, the awareness of first. And when we go out there, we're spreading science, technology, engineering, and math. We're bringing all these wonderful people into this great organization of FIRST to recognize the fun that they're going to have pursuing these science, technology, engineering, and math fields. So that is the prize that we do have on our mind. Is the chairman's the prize? No, it is what happens to go along with it, but it's not like, hey, what can we do to win this award? No, what does our community need? We live in Las Vegas. We know it needs a lot of help when it comes to science and math, period, and where we just go out there. What can we do to get them more involved? And what can we do to have fun? What does the whole team want to do? Students, coaches, mentors, parents, what do they want to do as a team activity so we can bring the whole community together and spread this awareness of STEM, spread the awareness of first? I think, I think the point is, I mean, we, our eyes are on the prize, but we're doing things that we really believe are important, you know, and so it makes it worthwhile because we care about, we care about the outcome. Why else? Yeah, I agree. Winning a banner is what validates your hard work. At the bottom of you know of everything that you do is, we won. You know, we did the most hard work of trying to get the most people involved in STEM, getting them involved in first in robotics, and yeah, why wouldn't you be happy to have a another blue banner on the wall? So or your first blue banner for even for some. And one you could definitely be be proud yeah. of. You put in a like you said a lot of hard work. Yeah. It, it takes time to come up with a game plan and then have an event and the event goes awful and then you have to sit back and you have to reflect okay this went bad this was great and this we need to never do again and from there you grow so I think another big thing that we should definitely mention here is 
having some sort of way to reflect on whatever you yep, do. Yeah, that's what we were gonna basically finish this episode off. So go, no, go okay. ahead, jump right in. All right, that's, that's where I was going. That's part of being a good team, right? You already knew where we were right, going right. with this. Lining them up, I'll knock it out of the park. Okay. <laughs> that's that's really what we do. Um, Again, we use a Google Calendar. In the Google Calendar, we have a reflection, whatever the event was. And like I said, good, bad, and the ugly. And the students will be up front with you. Mr. Campbell, you put me in a preschool and I'm a germaphobe. Uh, can I never do that again? <laughs> You're right. Why don't you greet the parents as they bring their children in? That'll work perfect. Yes, I love dealing with parents. Okay, and then you move on from that. If if it's an event no one likes, we're not gonna do it again. It wasn't fun. The passion that means has to be in it. The passion has to be in it because people aren't gonna come back to it. They're gonna, wow, you guys remember that awful experience that we had with robotics? Yeah, I never wanna do that again. That's not the message you wanna send. You wanna what was fun? Let's build on that so well, that everyone sees. Who would want to be? A, who would want to be involved in chairman if it wasn't in front? So no yeah. one. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Stephen, any closing remarks, guys? Or I think we pretty much is knocked it all out. Professionalism is key. Mm -hmm. Setting goals is key. Having Following fun. through is key. Mm -hmm. And just just do it. Just, if your team wants to try and find a niche, go out there and, and try and find a niche. Just do it and grow from there. Reflect. Did it work? Did it not work? And most importantly, was it fun? Do you want to do it again? Do it again. And it's not fun playing along what you just said there, if your team is one of the ones that maybe hasn't submitted for Chairman's Award in the past, it's very recommended that you do it. It really, and it's something we didn't focus on in the past and really has transformed our team. Yeah, as it took us course. definitely to that next yeah. level. Yeah, just really. look at the numbers of students that we have since we've gotten more people involved. Mm -hmm. And the diversity of the team, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank our panel for coming out today. I want to thank Kathy Schultz and everybody from the Cows. I want to thank Glenn Lee and everybody from the Hawaiian Kids. Got to do a shout out to the U.S. Army as well. Oh, man, I almost them. missed it. Our <laughs> cups are gone right now. <laughs> Uh, thanks to the U.S. Army that sponsored all six of these episodes. And all six episodes are going to be online on our iHeartRobot page on the website. We'll be posting that information on Chief Delphi on our Facebook account. And well, I think that is about it for this week. Thanks for joining us on iHeartRobots. Again, I'm Stephen McKinney. And I'm Eric Stenzer. We'll see you next week for programming. And stay tuned for that episode. That's going to be a great one. Thank you, guys.